How's it going, everybody? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know who this is. This is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast. The podcast only so magazine says, initiates profound discussions with rock and metal artists, allowing fans to discover the workflow, creative workflow, of their favorite musicians, and understand the factors that make the band succeed or fall from fame. We are also sponsored by Dark Fusion Systems, the best for your custom computing needs. Get $100 off your entire order. Use the card, code, code CPPOD, at darkfusionsystems.com, the description of the podcast below. Now under a feature presentation, we found a band of high schoolers that have the full support of William Duvall from Alice in Chains. Yep. You like metal. You like thrash. You like some great heavy stuff. Well, we've got Ethan the band Chain Saints on the podcast. We talk about what it's like to be in a band that has grown so much in the last two years from literally nothing like bare bones start to full album known by one of the biggest names in, in rock and metal and how they're continuing to go forward with that with the most mature mindset from a band that age you will ever see. This is a band you definitely want to get into, and their sound's authentic as you think it is. You guys ready? Let's go! Yeah! Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Corporate Rush Podcast. You like metal, you like heavy music, you want to find a brand new band that is so young they're not even out of high school yet? Yeah! That's what we got coming at you today. We got a brand new band that has been lauded, and I mean lauded in the positive, by William Duvall for Alice in Chains. And also, they've gotten high praise from Mastodon, so you know that there's going to be something here. They released their debut on Blindside back on August 2nd, and you can listen to it now. You can get into the band and get into this crisp sound of great metal. You like thrash? You like a little bit of punk thrown in there? This is what you're going to want to hear. So please welcome Ethan from the band Chained Saints to the podcast. So Ethan... Welcome to the Corporate Gresham Podcast. Yeah, good to be here. This is awesome. Dude, how is it going, man, in your world at the moment? You know, being in a band, kicking ass, but also still in high school. Like, what the hell? <laughs> Look, you know, you got to juggle the two, but it's definitely, you know, a lot of fun. You know, I go to school and after it's like a second life, you know, like today we had practice. So get that schoolwork done, then get that practice work done. Still got to go back to get more schoolwork done, but... But it's great. I, I enjoy it. Hey, as long as you enjoy it, that's honestly the key. Because as time goes on, as you get older, you know, if if you continue on with school or and you continue out the band as well, especially if you go into college, it's just gonna get the workload's gonna get much more. Or if you've got something you absolutely love and you've got other responsibilities like a job or a family or a significant other, a lot of that can get thrown in the foray. So you're kind of already getting used to that in a sense. However, trust me, there's a lot of times with some high high school homework where it's just like. It's just busy work. The band might be more important in the end. <laughs> Absolutely. I could totally agree. There's pro- definitely moments that I have skipped out on busy work homework just to, you know, do better stuff with the band, like demo and whatnot. Uh, and honestly, it's something where, you know, I remember going back into high school. I mean, shit, that was fuck 11 years ago already. God, I'm getting old. So if you want to make fun of me for that, go for it, man. I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> but but it's like I remember all this shit that was there. It's just like, you know, homework at the time seemed like it was so important, so crazy. Of course, got to get it done at some point. But a lot of people put so much stock and so much purpose into it where in the end, it's like, you know, did that really matter in terms of what else you could have been doing? Maybe you're doing something that had a bigger impact on your life going forward. Maybe you could have been doing something that you really had a passion behind that you could create something that was even bigger than potentially just following, you know, everybody's dream of, oh, we're just going to go to college and get a degree and whatnot. And if that's not what you want to do, then fuck it. Just go for whatever the hell you want to go for, man. Yeah, yeah, totally. So really, I don't really know much about the band. I was trying to find out as much as possible, especially with you guys being as young as you are. I kind of want to hear this story and I kind of want to have everybody else hear this story. So can you give me the whole entire like Chain Saint origin story up to this point? Like if this is the beginning of the band, I say it's a good amount of time. This is the beginning of the band and you're going to start out the story. I want you to start it out for people like it's the original Iron Man starting out the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So you know, it's some big shoes to fill, but I think you got this, man. So let me hear it. All right. So um, to begin with, we kind of started off. It was me and a previous original member. You know, the the current lineup wasn't the original, original lineup that we were. But, you know, it was kind of just me and another guitarist and a drummer from our school that was kind of just jamming. You know, we liked listening to Megadeth and we're jamming Megadeth songs and kind of just all that stuff. 
And you know, we kept jamming and jamming. We eventually found Sebastian, the bassist, through um, – I used to go to School of Rock for a little bit. So I kind of met him through there, and we became friends, and I realized this guy might be a perfect fit for our jamming. You know, we need a bassist, and I figured let's do it. And this was purely covers at the time. So we are kind of just having fun in my garage, you know, like come after school, have a good time. I was like a sophomore at the time. So I was definitely a lot younger, just trying to have fun. And eventually, you know, the other drummer left and I met Cam, our drummer now, through our a Guitar One class that we shared in school. It was kind of like some elective. You go and play guitar and, and it was fun. And he was trying to learn guitar, but I'd start talking to him and the other member, the other guitarist kind of had begun doing the same thing you know like talking to him trying to jam with him be like hey let's you want to join our thing and eventually it was like yeah you know i'm gonna give it a shot you guys sound you know pretty tight and you know he wasn't really jamming with anyone else so he was like why not let's let's give it a shot and we kind of just kept jamming kept playing these covers kept you know just you know being kids having fun and Eventually, we started, you know, being like, you know, let's stray away from covers. What if we just start writing songs? You know, we're all writing riffs and why not just put it into music? And we kept writing, writing. You know, it wasn't as serious at first. It was kind of just like, I got this riff. Uh oh, it sounds too much like a mega death riff. <laughs> all right, let's get rid of that riff. Let's get a new riff. And, you know, we started actually writing songs and we didn't even have titles for these songs. The first four songs were kind of just song one, song two, the cool song and song four. And we we kept we kept pushing it. We kept going with it because we we're just happy. You know, we're just we're just happy with what we we're making. You know, there weren't too many metalheads around us or people into that music that it was kind of like our little a little group where we can kind of just all talk about that stuff. And, you know, eventually we just we really got dialed into writing our own music and then it became a thing where it's like, you know, instead of playing where my parents are the only ones that hear us, let's play shows. Let's, mm -hmm. let's start making a set. Let's start running a set. Let's start writing more songs. So we can only have to do like two or three covers and then eventually two and then one and then zero until we kind of had enough songs that we thought were really good to demo and, put out there and we started demoing our music in the upstairs on the same computer i'm talking to you through <laughs> you know just going through logic and we go we come in this room and kind of just all demo stuff out and luckily you know that demo was heard by william and you know that kind of started the whole thing with him wanting to support us because he really dug what we were what we were doing and that really just motivated us more and more, you know, let's keep writing songs to make them better. Let's get rid of the ones that we didn't like as much and let's write new ones. And we kept pushing and pushing in. And then it got to the point where it's like, oh, shoot, it's getting, it's getting pretty real. Like William's taken interest in it. You know, there's talk of, you know, recording another demo at a real studio and letting him hear that. Then there was talk of like, he's going to come down. He wants to see us play. And which was awesome. And we did all that and time kept moving. We kept perfecting these songs by now, by that point, we had kind of already had the majority of what's on the record and kind of, it was just all fully written, but waiting to be recorded. And, you know, eventually went to the studio, got to Atlanta and which was such an experience, which was amazing we got to record the record and it was, we spent, I think about four weeks at West End Sound, uh, the Macedon studio. And with that, you know, obviously we were like, wow, this is getting real. Like we're gonna, we gotta really start, you know, putting our pedal to the metal. And we, we kept focusing, we kept working, you know, let's make this sound as good as we can. Let's get it tight. We did a week of pre-production in the studio and, you know, now, Lo and behold, we have the record. Um, in Atlanta, some you know things happened with one of the previous members I mentioned. You know things weren't working out as well as it was before, and we had to make a uh, you know group decision 
to get rid of that member, which was difficult. But we were really all just looking at what's going to be the best for the band rather than individually, because we really take pride in being a unit rather than just four guys. And, you know, now we're here. We have Sean, who I've been friends with for years. I He was the original person I've jammed with that got me into music. You know, just me and him in his garage. And it's funny to me how it comes full circle because we didn't talk for quite a bit. <laughs> And, you know, now he's part of the band and it's amazing. And yeah, now we're just focusing on shows, you know, promoting the record and and just keeping it going, you know. That's kind of an incredible story, just especially if you said, you know, you started really working on this, your software high school. I mean, that's a span of two years that you're maybe in a year and a half that you're cramming all of this in. Mm-hmm. And for a, any kind of band at all, there's a lot of bands that when they finally get that moment where they're starting to build up that momentum and they're starting to really drive forward with it, they're in a like year five or six of their overall existence. I mean, take a look at other bands like I use Ice Nine Kills as an example. They were starting to get some momentum, but they didn't really get that big, massive break until, you know, their fifth album with the Silver Scream. They had four mm-hmm. albums for that. They were a ska punk band originally. So it takes that time. And sometimes there's bands like you guys where you find something, you know, really good right away and you just continue to focus in on it and continue to drive forward and forward and forward. And it seems like every step of the way, you know, you're figuring out that this is becoming more real, that this is becoming a much larger thing than you possibly maybe thought of at this point in time. I can tell you've always wanted to be at this, like this stage, but Mm -hmm. it's how fast it's happening. But the other aspect that I'm really getting from the band story is, you guys are not afraid to continue pushing, to continue trying these things and to embrace every single challenge when it comes up as something new and something exciting and a chance and an opportunity to really show off who you guys are and improve overall. Because if you were content with what you were just doing, then you guys wouldn't have been making those demos on your computer that you're recording on. You wouldn't have worked so hard to try and work on these things and all of a sudden have William Duvall from Alice in Chains really take a liking to the band and take an interest in it. You wouldn't have pushed and work and go into the studio at Macedon Studio. You wouldn't have made the choice to, you know, potentially um part ways with that other member because that can be tough especially at a younger age and a younger stage in a band's career especially if that member has been around for quite a while or was one of the original guys that started this whole entire thing but it's also an experience that is important to have because now going forward you have members and you have a team you have a unit that's working towards the same goal but if for some reason any of those uncomfortable situations ever come up again, whether it is with a band member, whether it's with whoever else you're working with, a label, it could be anything that you have the experience already built in of going through an uncomfortable moment as a band, but you have the ability to do it together and make the best decision possible. There's a lot that you've learned in there in that year and a half that you might not necessarily fully realize or understand until you get to those moments where you have to employ those things. But the experience you've had and the growth that you've already had over the past year and a half to two years is going to be so paramount going into the further success of the band that it's just going to pay off dividends like exponential growth would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could definitely say we take pride in how we overcame all of this. You know, like I said, we really like to treat this as us as a unit, as chain saint, not just, Mm -hmm. you know, individuals or two groups of two or, or, you know, we just, all of us, it's all or nothing. And, you know, it was definitely hard, especially dealing with those things in the studio, leading us to part with a member. There was, you know, t- us talking like, you know, what if this is it? What if, what if we got this far, but it just wasn't meant to be? And, you know, it was a lot harder for me because that member was definitely my best friend at the time for a solid year or two. But, and it was, it was discouraging, but, that's also what we why we decided to name the record what it is. You know, it'll always be there to show us that we overcame something. We learned this lesson and we're going to always, you know, learn. We're going to know from that and it won't ever happen again. And we don't want it to give the message of, hey, we were blindsided, this and that. Uh, you know, we don't like this, whatever person. Because it's not like that. It's more just you know, more motivational that you can get up from that dark place and still, you know, now it's out and, and you can really just still succeed if you keep pushing, even if all hope seems lost at one moment, 
you know, that there's another moment where you could be glad that you just kept going. That's a great way to put it because it's like every single day is a brand new day to continue to keep going, a brand new day to start something new, and a brand new day to just get that new moment of positivity rolling because especially you're moving someone from a band, especially if they've been your best friend for a year or two at that point. It, I, I'm not going to lie to you, man. That sounds like a very tough decision, a very tough conversation to have. And it's a momentum shifting moment, not only for where the band is, but for you as a person, because that's going to change dynamics of a friendship right there. Even and But you never know what might happen beyond that. I've heard stories from other band members as well, from other bands where, you know, they end up getting removed from a band or getting, you know, have asked to leave a band. And it's, you know, it's never a good thing or it's never, you know, the most positive, uplifting thing. But it's, it depends upon, you know, as people, what is your response to it? It depends upon from you as a band member and the rest of the band, how do you respond to this and how do you continue to go forward, how you continue to make sure the band's in the best possible spot. And from the other aspect of that person who let, ended up leaving the band, it's what do they do? How do they continue to move forward and not let this moment potentially define their music career? I think about someone like Matt Madeira from From Ashes to New when he uh, got asked to leave Trivium because I had him on the podcast. He's like, yeah, it wasn't the most fun situation. But now where he is and where Trivium are, it's like everyone found their perfect spot. Trivium got Alex Bent. Matt went from Ashes to New. Both bands are doing incredibly well. And now everything seems pretty pretty good, not going to lie. So yeah, it's yeah. just that moment and continuing to have that, you know, have that positivity and have that hope that things are going to get better. And that's why I like the what you said about Blindside as well, because you're always going to have those moments, whether it's a band or as a human, that the shit's just going to happen. You're not going to see it coming. And it's kind of like that Rocky quote from the six Rocky movie. It's not about how hard you can hit. It's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. And it seems mm -hmm. like you guys embody that even through, you know, where you are at right now and continue to go forward. Like that's, you guys are kind of battle hardened already. <laughs> yeah, we definitely um, want to use our experience for the better for us and not see these, th those hard moments as like, oh, this happened and this happened because of someone and because of this, I don't like this person and now I'm angry and now I have all these negative emotions. It's more just like, you know, what happens happened. It's life. Truth is, it's just life and life happened and not everything's going to be perfect all the time. But the biggest thing is if you can make it perfect after and if you just take every day and just try and make it back to back to perfect or what it was and and really and just keep pushing that's our biggest driving factor is with this experience is to keep it going just because you know we were already at ground zero after we were after we felt like we were at the top you know we went right back to ground zero and we're kind of just motivated to see how far we can get after a moment like that where it feels like it's just completely done and over and, it's, and and weird point too is it's never really completely done or over. Like you said, it mm -hmm. all depends upon how you can get up from that. And it depends upon where the mindset is. You guys have the mindset of, okay, how do we grow from this? How do we get better from this? Because if you were to stay with, oh, this something happened and, you know, you felt scorned, you felt blindsided, you felt a little, you know, you felt you felt just like a little betrayed at some times, maybe a point, at a point. It's just that times, you know, resentment and anger just end up building up inside you. Then you get those feelings of anxiety. It just, you get that, you know, chest you know, tightness, even when you're not doing anything, it's just embedded in you. And it just ends up creating more problems further down the line. It's you're stopping those issues from ever happening right from the get go. Not necessarily, you know, saying, oh, we're just going to forget about it. No, you're learning from it, you're healing from it, and you're moving on from it, and you're growing from it. You're consistently trying to get better from that situation, which has led you guys to this point where there is a debut album out where William Duell from Allison Chains is fully behind the band and where there's continued growth happening while you guys still have so, so, so much to go, so much more to learn and so much more to experience than you already have, where there are plenty of bands out there with guys in their 20s, 30s, even 40s that wish they were in the position that you were in, and you are not taking any of that for granted. Yeah, I am I remember thinking about it back when we were in Atlanta, you know, even... You know, it was a little before now because it's been a while since then. But mm -hmm. I was thinking, like, what is it? What am I? What is going to happen? Like, what is it going to be like at this point in time? And I was thinking about it maybe a year and a half ago. You know, like we had lost a singer slash guitarist, and to me, it was that it was a band member, but also a friend. And there was a time where it was a long period of you know, it was just the three of us, 
And, you know, we didn't know what we were going to do. We didn't know if, you know, we're just going to make, we're just going to keep jamming these songs and, you know, hopefully someone hears the record and that's about it. And, and we're just happy with that. But, but no, and we're, and we're also glad with the way things ended, you know, it was definitely not a very, it wasn't like a angry, bitter thing. It was, you know, we all sat down and talked after we got back from Atlanta and, you know, no hard feelings about anything, kind of just doing it for the, just making it the best for the bands because, you know, I would do the same thing if it was me. I just want to see this thing go as far as possible. Even if I'm not a part of it anymore, I'd, I'd want to see it, you know, have success just because, you know, the other guys are there and we're glad that it went that way because it definitely uh, made it more of a lesson with all of us rather than just a lesson for three of us and harsh feelings with one of them. It's a good way to put it. And it's really cool to just see that you have the maturity, not only to make those decisions, but also to continue to have a group where, you know, everything it might not be, you know, as good as it once was, but it's definitely nowhere near as bad as it could have been or as bad as, you know, other band breakups or other, you know, member leavings have been in the historical past, especially with the way you guys are now. I mean, who knows? Maybe your buddy will end up starting a new band. Maybe he'll end up getting some success with that too. And then you can continue to support them at the same time as well and really put a lot of practice behind the words that you're saying, which I absolutely love. Now, I got to ask this question. We brought up his name a couple of times. How the heck did William Duvall get, you know, to know about you guys? How do you get to know about this band? What's the story so, behind that? Like I, like I mentioned, um, you know, we were kind of just jamming, recording demos. We didn't think these were even going to be heard by anybody. We just did it so we could hear videos or instead of listening to videos that we took from the garage where it sounds like a broken boom box. It's just like... <laughs> We figured let's, I have logic on my computer and, you know, I have the amps to connect up and I have the drum kit here. Why don't I just, why don't we just start at least putting it on to, to make it sound good. And we did that. And, you know, at one point, my, so my dad was friends with him a while, while back, but he wasn't really sure. He was telling us like, you know, you guys sound good, but like, he doesn't really know anything about music like that so he's like i'm gonna go ask william you know is are they any good because they sound good to me are they you know are they worth are they worth putting some thought into like that and he sent like those demos to william and william was like this is something that if they take it seriously can really be you know built upon we had really only like three songs at the time and two of them aren't even on the record and we just figured like yeah, we'll rec- we'll send it to William. Of course, we'll send it to William if we have the chance. Like this is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's amazing that he'll hear it and we could hear what he thinks, good or bad, just whatever constructive criticism. And luckily for the better, he loved it. And you know, after that, he wanted to hear more. And he said, you know, can you guys, by any chance, even if it costs you know extra money, can you guys go into a studio where we could record you know real instruments to to you know a whole thing and get real demos out of these and you know we spent a weekend at his studio and we did it and he we sent it to him and you know he really loved it he was like this is this is some quality stuff that i want to be behind and support and we we're just so happy this was motivating us so much you know like let's let's write more songs to send to him let's do as much as we can and that's definitely what pushed us to write a lot of the songs on the record was just being motivated. Like we, we just had kind of a flow of for a couple months of just spitting out songs that we'd write in like one and a half practice days. And we we're just, just so motivated. And then at one point he was like, I'm going to fly down and see you guys live. Cause we were playing some shows at that point. And he came and he, you know, critiqued and he watched and, he told us we went to, out to eat with him after and he told us like this is something that I want to get behind because we have a shot if we do it right. And, you know, after that, it was more just like, let's see how it keeps moving. Let's keep playing shows. Let's let it keep going organically instead of us, you know, getting into a mindset where we're like, we have to do this to please William and let's not make it us anymore. Let's do it just for this. 
we wanted to keep it as organic as possible. And that definitely carried over to the recording because that is what comes next is eventually we, you know, had the decision, we planned it all out. Let's, let's go to West end. Let's go to Atlanta and let's record this record there. We worked with Tom Tapley, best engineer in the game. Love that guy. And we, we just did the whole record. He was like a mentor with us, which was great. And it only kept building the relationship and, you know, now we're where we're at with him. And it's great that we built a relationship just off of, you know, some demos from the computer. But again, but you guys took the shot, especially with the connection that you had, the like connection you guys had to William, where there's a lot of people that it's like, oh, I would love to be able to get my music out in front of somebody like that. And because you had a slight opportunity to make that happen, you guys took it full force. You guys didn't even relent on it. And that's really what helped you guys, you know, get forward, go forward with it. But the main crux of the story that I'm really happy about what I heard was the fact that after you guys even met William, after you saw you play you live, after you guys went out to eat with him and he really got behind the band, your thought process was, let's see how far we continue to make this go, but let's do this, the sound that we have. Because if you guys were to try and conform your sound to try and please what, you know, potentially what William had wanted, even though he wanted exactly what you guys were already putting out that time then the overall idea of the sound would have been maybe watered down or changed up a bit or something that would not have that genuine feel to it that so much music has to have. Because if you're trying to make music for somebody else and you're not really into it, right now, especially with how much music there is out there, audiences know we can pick up on it and we'll move on to the next thing if we are not into it and we don't think it comes from a genuine place. But if you guys are continuing with the focus of, Already, we've got a huge backing behind us. We are not going to mess this up. But remember, he fell in love with the sound for what we already made. So now we just have to take that and continue to build up on it the way that we would naturally do that. And then the sound is going to evolve. And we're really going to create this sound that is fully what Chain Saint is. Because when it comes to a band, you know, very, almost never does a band find that core sound that is going to stick with them forever on the first album or any first mm-hmm. recordings. I mean, we, we, no, no one's Linkin Park with hybrid theory here, or no one's Guns N' Roses with Appetite for Destruction. It's usually a lot later on when that, that mm-hmm. like full sound fleshes out. But So that's what's perfect for you guys. You guys have the backing, you guys have the motivation to do it, but you have the wherewithal and the thoughtfulness to make sure that you're continuing to do this in the most genuine way to your own writing style, to what you want to do with music, so that again, when we hear it, we know it's you and we know it's always you. Yeah, we like I said earlier, we definitely take pride in making it like a collective us rather than four people. And we carry that unit mentality over kind of just everything, you know, decisions, um, when we're writing, just anything that has to do with us as members we really we just try to run it through everybody as much as possible and especially when we write you know we're very proud of how these songs came out because they weren't just too much one person and then this one was written by one person you know like there's songs that like one of them i wrote the whole thing but i just wasn't comfortable bringing that in saying this is it you know i i'm like let's let's see what you guys think of this riff and this riff hey you guys want to change this one oh yeah i like that one but let's switch this one let's put this one here and it was a lot of that and that's definitely what built us to be like a unit like we try to be and and like we are and we wanted to make sure we kept that mentality and not get you know our heads you know filled with i don't, I don't know how to put it but kind of just like not get our heads filled up with like, Oh, we're, what if we're going to get so famous off of this? Let's do it. Let's do it. Cause now will someone important said that it's cool and get like super, um, on focus. We figured, no, let's, you know, if we have a shot, let's just make it straight up what we are. This is what he likes. This is what we like, which was most important to us. You know, we didn't, we didn't choose a song to be on the record unless we thought every part was perfect to all of us. And, we we still stick by that you know if we we won't ever try and release anything or play anything or even continue things if one of us just don't really like it and it's 
definitely created a very comfortable environment with all of us because we'll be open, you know, Hey, I don't like that riff or, or, Hey, I don't want to do this. Um, let's, let's maybe work on something else. Cause I'm not feeling it. Okay. And we, we really just like to be a unit like that. Cause it's definitely put us with those type of decisions where we are now. And it, it's definitely toned down any type of clashing among us or any type of, you know, no pun intended animosity, <laughs> but, but yeah, we, we just want to make sure that we can keep this as raw and original as possible. And that's also why we chose, you know, let's record this to tape and let's record it. No click, no computers, just us playing in a room. And, you know, if we messed up a part, re record it again. And, and that's us. It's like a garage band because that's truly what we are is a garage band. What I think this, especially that part of this whole entire story that is changed at this point is going to really take hold is when it comes to going forward with how you write music, how you create this stuff, because there I've heard plenty of stories from plenty of other bands and how they write music, where it's one person might be the principal songwriter for this portion of it for the instrumentals. One person might be strictly on the vocal side. The other guys, you know, they inter interject here and there. But when it comes to really creating stuff, they're not as heavy as a uh, creative force in the whole entire process. And it all depends upon what is going to work best for your group, for your band at that point in time. Because there might be some guys in the bands that don't want to really be a whole heavy ass or heavy influence in writing the music, that don't want to be in that responsibility. But there are guys that want that as well. But if you guys as a whole want to make sure that you guys are a unit as a team, as a full band, and are willing to have everybody have an equal say in every aspect of the music creation process, that's going to help bring new ideas to the table and help bring that comfortability of new ideas to the table so that you can continue to not only build up on the sound you have, but innovate, try new things, experiment here and there, and have the trust within you guys to make sure that that happens. Then... As you continue to record, as you continue to go forward, then you're finding the nuances of what's going to be best for recording on your end. I love the fact that you guys record all together on tape, and then if something messed up, you had to re-record it again, just because you don't see that ever really anymore. The last time I heard a band really recording a full thing on tape was when uh, the Foo Fighters made the Wasting Light album in 2011. And it brings this different feel to it. It brings a little bit more of a grittiness to it, a less of a refinement because you can remove so much of that so easily in a digital space. From a tape side, it's like what's there is what is there. You can't really go away from that. And it brings that garage band authenticity to what you guys have. So it brings that connection right back in terms of sound, but it still has the fullness that is you and you're still able to build up on it beyond that. So you can add a little bit of pieces here and there. Plus, you never know after all the film is done and then you put it, you maybe uh, digitize it, but it's all one track. Then you had a couple of things in there, but you still can't get away from that one main track that you had that was on tape. Yeah, and we really wanted to keep it as raw as possible. I mean, we it was so untouched and just original to what we sound like that I have the master tape sitting right next to me. On This is what's in that box. I'll show you. What's in yes. this box right here? Yes. It is is what's on the album and <laughs> this is this is the tape in this box and we have a couple of them but what's on there is on the record you know and we we really wanted to carry that over because that's also what we loved is when we we're playing in a garage we still play in the same garage <laughs> writing this, these songs in there and we wanted to carry that sound of like almost like a band you hear at a local show you know it's just very raw and it's very organic and it's not overproduced or or underproduced where you're doing it on purpose almost it's just us and we really want to that's definitely a theme we're going to keep because it's just it's just how we are is we're, we're not the type of people where we want to be a like you know ethan Kahn and the chain saints like we want to be chain saint we're a band of musicians and that was just the best move for us was we thought it was just to make it how we want it to sound as in just organic and raw really just raw 
I love that you brought up that master tape and actually showed it because I'm because you always hear about stuff like that. At times I never actually seen someone pull out the whole entire master. Like, yeah, dude, look at this. Yeah, this is freaking yeah. awesome. I'm a little kind of floored by that. I'm a little thrown off by it too. <laughs> but even as you know, you guys are making more music as you guys are playing live shows and playing more shows. I love the fact that you're still kind of having that garage bed mentality to it, where it's still raw, it's still authentic, it's still you guys. And it's still unfiltered. Now, you guys are continuing to grow. You guys are, you know, like we saw over the past years from where you started to where you are now. It's a big leap and bound maybe where you thought you were. And it's going to be the same way when you're playing shows too. When you're playing in a smaller venue, when you're playing, you know, you kind of can have that garage band mentality. And you can really make that happen and have that more intimate setting. But as the band continues to grow and you play in bigger settings in front of a lot more people where there's more production that can be done with it that's needed. It's going to be something I know you guys are going to end up having to add at some point, whether how much or how little, I don't know. But as you add these things into your live set to really enhance the performance, the main thing, and I think you already have this in your brain, is to make sure that it still stays within exactly what you guys want to do. So even as that aspect of the overall live show that is Chain Saint continues to rise, you guys still provide that authentic feeling that is out there. And honestly, as a comparison for a band that's like maybe one to watch and see how they do that. I don't think there's a better comparison, honestly, in my mind than watching seven dust because they're still yeah. raw as hell up there, but they're so crisp, so clean, so perfect. Their production is not that like over the top. It's not even really fully there because you're just so enamored with what's there. That could be a perfect, like connecting point where it's like seven dust. This is where chain saint could really go in terms of a live setting at that level. Yeah, we're definitely going to make sure to carry over no matter, you know, what type of fame or anything, you know, we're not really worried about that because that's and that's why we really th um, try to keep it as organic as possible. And, and like how you were saying, like seven dust, especially when we play, because the truth is, is, you know, none of us really are doing this with the goal in mind to make $10 million and, you know, make music that's going to buy us a mansion. We just we just want to be able to get home from school on a bad Tuesday and have practice and suddenly everything's good again, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, that's kind of what we live for. It's we we just love to play music and, you know, we've created a band of brothers, basically, where we all understand each other musically and and, you know, as friends and that will definitely that definitely carries over to our sound because I've jammed with a lot of people at like over time, but you know, it's just different when you really have a bond with those people and you're not trying to be something that you're not. You're just trying to be everyone's trying to be who they are. And I feel like when everyone tries to be who they are, just being them, it blends perfectly. And that's what we've we've achieved with this is just the purest form of us. I think you've said it best. And maybe the goal right now in terms of a monetary side of things is maybe have the music make you enough money at this moment in time. So yeah. you guys can get your own garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That will definitely be a stepping stone to have our own garage to practice in. But, but for now, you know, there's definitely the goals in mind of like, yeah, let's make money. You know, I am going to be, an adult in the near future, you know, as much as it's been mostly in high school and all of that, obviously got to start thinking about that side. But to me, no matter what, it's probably always going to be, you know, things like money and whatnot and just being happy about it. Oh, I know exactly where you're coming from there. And and trust me, it's of course, you always have to have a little bit of an understanding of where the money is. But if you're prioritizing money over your own happiness, then you're always going to be chasing an infinite thing that's never going to make it. But if you find that happiness and you have the money to be able to continue to do it and just enjoy where you're at, ooh, you're, you're in a good spot, man. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so there's a lot of great things about, you know, you know, becoming adult, getting your 20s. Some things that kind of suck, though, like taxes. Yep. So if my IRS agent that's watching this is listening, hi, how are you? <laughs> Please don't audit me. <laughs> <laughs> 
But beyond that, of course, you guys got the album Blindside, which came out back on August 2nd. And when you guys released the album, what was the overall initial reception to it? How did people take to this? Because I want to know how they took to it so other people can hear how they took to it and be like, okay, I got to go check this out now. Where can I find it? Like, we got to let it yeah. know. I am, I'm still, to be honest, have not had my head wrapped around how well it's being received. <laughs> You know, I still check, you know, the Spotify numbers every day and the YouTube numbers and I look through all the comments and I'm just so grateful that it's actually gone this way. And yeah, you know, I not to sound like I doubted us or anything, but I didn't think it, you know, the record would get past maybe like us to like a thousand monthly listeners. You know, something like that cuz <laughs> as much as we um as we've had like a connection like William, it doesn't really mean that we're instantly going to have his fan base basically Mm -hmm. because people still have to like us. And I'm just grateful that after, you know, all this hard work that we've put in, that it's actually being appreciated by a lot more people than I thought. And it feels good, you know, to, you could definitely obviously check out our animosity YouTube video, (laughs) the music video and, that's where we've got the best reception and it's a lot of good things people are saying, which is very motivating. You know, that was the biggest thing. Cause I'm, you know, I'm still young. I, I still mm-hmm. want to make people happy and obviously like don't want to see mean comments, but this it's really just nice people saying nice things. And it definitely is, is great to see that reception being positive especially for band or a band of kids that I thought people wouldn't take seriously because of that. I'm not surprised that you would, would have thought that either, just because there are so many artists out there. And when you hear about, Oh, you know, there's an artist that, you know, full of, you know, a bunch of high school kids, you never really give them the time of day. And that comes from every generation that has ever been around. That's nothing new. That's always mm-hmm. been the thing. However, if you're expecting, you know, maybe if we get a thousand monthly listeners on Spotify, that'd be nice. When you were speaking about that, I had to pull it up to see what the exact number is, and it's close to 7,000. So you're yeah. definitely hitting on that. I saw the comments on the animosity video, and there are a lot of positivity behind there as well. Of course, you know, there might get a negative comment here and there. That's always going to happen. It's the internet. Not mm-hmm. everybody's a happy person. And sometimes they just don't want to, you know, spread happiness themselves. It happens. However, and it's their opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And it's their opinion. You know, some people are going to like certain music. Some people aren't. If you play a country song in front of me, I'm probably not going to like it. You play something that goes chugga, chugga, chugga with a breakdown in front of it. I'm probably going to have a smile on my face. All personal opinion. But it's the success that you're having right now. The fact that people are taking you seriously. The fact that there is growth or the fact that there is so much more room to still grow there. But you're not letting it get to your head. You're still enjoying the whole entire process and you're still happy where you are. You're still wanting to go further. You still have the drive to go further, the motivation to go further. But unlike so many other people with a lot of things, and this isn't just music, this isn't just musicians, this goes for so much of humanity. You never really get to like sit back and appreciate not only where you are, but also, okay, maybe another you jumped another milestone and it's great. But you look back and it's like, you know, when you were, you know, two years ago, you would have been super duper excited and super duper happy to be at this point. Like if you told 16 year old you like, or 15 year old you, this is where you would be in two years. That he probably would have shit himself. I like, wouldn't believe myself. Yeah. I wouldn't believe it. Like, yeah, I probably and, would just say that I'm lying to myself. Yeah. And then look at what happened. It's like, it actually happens. Or sometimes for myself, I'll look back. It's like, yeah, I've got this number. Uh, I got this like this number of views, number of subscribers on an episode on, a, on the channel, this number of views on an episode. But I think back to like, oh, I remember when I got my first thousand too, and how just over the moon I was. And it's like, so I got to the next thousand. It's like, yeah, and I get to another thousand, yeah. And it's fun. It's great, but it just doesn't mm-hmm. hit like the same as that first thousand. However, I still can always appreciate how long it took to get to that point. And it's like, continue to build, continue to build, but still be grateful for where you're at right now and be grateful for where you were because it helps keep that level headedness and that gratefulness for where you are and to continue to keep going with that positivity and make sure you don't get way too far ahead of yourself in terms of we're going to make so much money or we're going to get on this. We're going to get on this now. We deserve all of this. 
No, you're just you're you're staying level headed, and that is an incredibly yeah. powerful thing to continue to have. So, dude, it, it's it's incredible seeing the level of maturity for a band that's you know still in high school at this point for this amount of success. I'm I'm honestly blown away by it. Yeah, we tried to um, you know we're getting into a game of not where there's not a lot of people up there at our age, and mm-hmm. you know we're prepared you know, for the mean YouTube comments and the mean reviews and things like that. But the best thing we could do is not fall victim to them, but kind of just believe in ourselves. And we, we definitely keep each other up. And, you know, we want to make sure that, that this has a longevity because I think that this could be, we all believe this could be something that can really carry us for our life because you know we all love it and you know i'm just glad also that after such a long process of writing this music to recording the music to having to re-record the vocals with a new vocalist and then having to wait for all these things to happen all right now let's release it you know and to finally see that people are then appreciating it and a lot more than i thought is definitely nice and as much but as well as it is we always want to make sure that we're level-headed you know don't want to get our heads in the sky to where we can't come back down to earth you know we want to we want to see this fly for a long time rather than just you know a fast short trip and that's kind of what we're what we're focusing on is making sure that we're down to earth and just keep it going, keep it natural. Damn. I mean, just that mindset, I feel like it's going to take you guys incredibly far. And I'm, I'm, I'm honestly blown away by it. I'm impressed by it. So I'm a little, little, little speechless at the moment. God damn, dude, that doesn't never really happen. So <laughs> you achieved something there. My God. <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) Well, Ethan, so one other question I got for you is now that the album is out, now that we're going to the rest of 2024 and 2025 is just on the horizon, what's coming up next for Chain Saint? What do you got coming up for all of us? Very excited. Um, You know, a few things coming up is definitely some shows. Obviously, you know, keep checking out the music. We are most active on Instagram if you want all these updates. Um, but yeah, for now, it's just a lot of shows, you know, we teamed up with Loudwire, still can't believe I'm on Loudwire, (laughs) but teamed up with Loudwire for, you know, someone will have a chance to be out in our next music video for our single Stronger Than Stone. So that is definitely something that is happening very soon. And, but yeah, besides that just shows, you know, keeping, keep trying to support the album you know, get this music video going and yeah, I'm just keep it going. Yeah. Now when they come, I got to ask specifically about the shows though. When it comes to shows, are you staying around your area in the Florida region or you expand out a little bit? Of course, I know you guys are still in school, so it's a little bit tougher. You can't just go on a month long run and just have a blast with it. It's, but I'm a little curious just because I live in a completely different part of the country than you do, my friend. I kind of oh, want to yeah? see you guys play live. So yeah, we want to obviously, um, you know, keep, playing play more in different places for us right now it's a little difficult you know like our basis his first day of school is tomorrow so it's um you know trying to make that fit and go out farther it's going to be difficult and to be fair our first show was already like an hour away from where we were at when we played our first show but for now you know trying to keep it as local as possible, you know, definitely want to go around Florida is the next goal. Um, the only thing that sucks about being in school is that that's something that probably has to wait for summer until we start mm-hmm. going, you know, farther than Florida or really going around. But the way it's moving is I, I don't even know who knows. It could be even sooner than that. So I'm kind of just excited for everything just to see how this keeps rolling. There, you're right. Who knows? Maybe once winter comes around, you get a little bit of time on a winter break and you just go on a little bit of an East Coast run on there. Maybe you get some time over spring, get a week on there, and then you just go on a couple of shows in the Midwest and come by me over here. We can always have a <laughs> blast and enjoy some great music and potentially hitting each other in the pit for fun. You, you never know what might happen, 
but uh, you guys are still keeping abreast situation of where you are in life right now, but still have the drive and the want to go forward and have the idea of anything is possible. We're just open to the experience to see what happens with that. And I absolutely love the idea behind it because then you never know what might come your way, but you're always going to be happy that something came your way. Mm-hmm. Yep, totally. Yep. And now I got I have, one. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I have one question for you before before this is over. All right. Is that an Octoloose poster in the background or am which, I misseeing things? Which one? The black one? The uh, the reddish one. This you one can't right tell here? if. Yeah. Oh, that's a We Came As Romans one from their 2023. Oh, yeah. Movie. It looked like the. Um, the God Knows. Uh, yeah, the God Knows one. Yeah. Oh, I get, no, shoot. Uh, Tearing the Fabric of Life. Exactly. EP. Yeah, that's, there you go. Yeah. yeah I kind of looking at it through the screener and I'm like, you're absolutely. Yeah. You can see right. the guy like backwards, like. Yeah, and it's. Kind of. it's yeah, and it's literally just a guy falling, like falling down that they use for their uh, one more day video from yeah. 2022. But it's just like the whole color scheme went from blue to red. And the reason I asked, I'm like, wait a minute, it's not the black one, is it? I mean, it pretty. <laughs> it's a, yeah. I mean, you can see it's not you know knock loose when no, you knock came loose, as. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it kind of fits with that. So ha, huh, well that kind of yeah. works. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I need to get a knock loose one there. Maybe you do. I need to get one too. So. I'll, I'll try again in November when they're on tour and I can see them two nights in a row. If if I'm not completely uh, bloody pulp and mess in, after the pit. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'm a little scared for that tour. I'm going on it to see uh, Drain the Garden and Knocked Loose. So that's going to be that's going to be a fun one for sure. We're going we're gonna to get beat up at a Drain beach party <laughs> before yeah. Knocked Loose goes on. That's going to be nuts. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be my th- uh, third time seeing Drain. Oh, I've never seen Drain. I, oh, I had not a chance. I've seen Knock Loose shoot is it four or five times now. I can't even remember, nice. but it's going to be fun. But I got yeah. one more quest for you, Ethan, and it's something I love to ask every artist I bring on the podcast. I've been doing this for over a year now. It's something that allows us as music lovers to get into more music, but also to get into more music that you love. So can you name me three bands or artists that you love that you would love to see more people get into right now? Okay, I can tell you one, and a lot of people obviously know about Tool, but they're always going to be a big band for me. I grew up on, especially getting to music, on mm-hmm. Prague. That's, that was like my baseline, like Prague rock. Things like Dream Theater, that was my nerdy music side coming out. And Tool was always just a, a big like catch to me. I just loved Tool. I always loved Tool. I've probably listened to Undertow like twice today already because <laughs> I just... I just love them so much. Um, another band, definitely heavier. If you like sing Sugabog, check out Volcano. Their EP, super sick. Uh, it's I wish it was longer than 12 minutes. It's too short. <laughs> um, but besides that, uh, if I want to keep it metal, one band I've been digging recently is this hardcore band called Momentum. Pretty, pretty cool. You know, it's... The I love the drum sound and their drummer is super sick. I see him on Instagram. Another shout out for a drummer, Machine Gun Betty for or Benny from Tsunami. Check those guys out. But yeah, those are those are probably three bands I'd tell people just listen to more because they need some more love. Those are good picks, and I always love to hear you know when some suggestions come through of bands that have been on the podcast before. One of those being Sang with Sugabog. I had him back on oh, like really? twenty twenty one. That was over three years ago. I got to get Sang with SpongeBob back on. <laughs> yep, that's sick. That's so cool that they're on here. Yeah, yeah, that's way, awesome. way, way back. In. This is this this was this was during the uh, shutdown time before shows came back after the pandemic. So. Yeah, yeah, or before, but not the before four time long, long ago before the pandemic, where no one remembers <laughs> anything anymore. <laughs> no one, yeah, <laughs> no one. But those are great picks. And now, as we bring this episode to its conclusion, one thing I'd like to do is give you as my guest a chance to say whatever you want to say, plug where you want to plug, promote it or promote the end of the episode. So, Ethan, the floor is yours. Um, I'll keep it short and sweet. You know, just check out the Animosity YouTube music video. We definitely put a lot of effort into that one. And um, yeah, check that one out. Definitely check out our Instagram. That's where we're most active. We're on mostly all platforms but instagram is definitely our strong suit so if you guys ever have any questions about anything or want to see what we're up to definitely check out the instagram and yeah just listen to the record for sure but yeah besides that just just 
Show some love, yeah. <laughs> Just show them some love, baby. And now it's time for me on this episode with three things. First things first, when it comes to Chain Saint, again, their debut on Blindside is out now. You can go check it out anywhere you can get music. You're also going to follow along with them. Like they said, go to Instagram because that's where the most active and you could possibly talk to them and get to know more about this great band. So go to the description of the podcast where it says Find Chain Saint Online. Link symbols for everything are going to be down there so you have no reason not to get in this band, listen to music, or just miss out on them. I'm doing everything for you. I'm doing all the search. I'm Google here. Just click the link. Go to your favorite yeah. one. Follow along with the band. Trust me, you'll have a good time. Now it's time for number two. And Ethan, whenever guests on the podcast, I enjoy the podcast. I tend to make a certain promise as a way to say thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. And I would love to continue to support the band in the future. So my promise to you is this. It is a when, because that implies it's going to happen. We just don't have a day or time to say yet. When I get to you perform live for the first time, I will find you. I will come and say hi to you. But most importantly, first round's on me. Now, no, you're not. I'm still in high school yet, so we meant to drink, you know, sparkling grape juice or white monster, but we'll think of something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll think of something. <laughs> we'll think of something, you know. Uh, so, again, for all the government agents listening out on this, we are following yeah. the law on this one. We will keep it PG, <laughs> but still metal. We'll keep it PG, but metal. Liquid death, baby. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, it's time for number three. Ethan, I cannot just by saying goodbye. This was a hell of a lot of fun having you on the podcast today. I would love to be back on again in the future. And I made a promise to you that I do not plan on letting go. So, this is not goodbye, my friend. This is. Yep. I'll see you later. Yep. I'll see you later. Woo! Well, folks, I'm interview with Ethan from the band Chain Saints. Now, it's time for Kevin's final thought. I was blown away by the maturity of not only Ethan, but how the entire band operates as well. For a band that is primarily full of a group of high schoolers, when I say that, yes, of course, your initial thought is, oh man, you know, they're high school kids, you know, not take them seriously, things are going to change, whatnot. No, 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 no. These guys have been doing this for two years and they have found exactly what works for them. They found the piece of music that really sparks an interest in them, that really continues to drive them. And with every success they've had, not only have they enjoyed it, but they have continued to use it to motivate them to push further. And they have kept the level-headedness to them to not get too big into it, to not get too big of an ego, and to continue to drive forward with what they want to do with music and to make it the best as possible. I absolutely commend them for that because... There are so many bands out there that when they smell a whiff of success, they get that whiff of success, they end up just running with it and letting their egos get too big and things just do not go well. But what Chain Saints is able to do, you know, they have the full support of William Duvall from Allison Chains. They got praise from Mastodon as they recorded in their studio, but they have continued to stay true themselves, continue to make the music that they wanted to make and continue to grow in the way that they feel is best. And it's absolutely showing. I also love the fact they recorded on tape. They're keeping it as authentic as possible. And that is such a huge thing in today's day age. You listen to Blindside, you're going to feel that authenticity. But what I like about that most is there's so much room for growth to still happen. And you can see it happening already. So be sure to become a fan of Chainsaw. Go through the podcast where it says find Chainsaw line links, links and Labels for everything are down below, so go and follow along with them. Go and check out the new album. Also, be sure to follow along with the Corporate Rush Podcast. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hit subscribe right down here if you're on YouTube. Hit follow on Spotify or Podcast. Hit the like button right down here or like the episode on Spotify or Podcast. I want to thank you all for joining us today. And that's going to be it for me, everybody. Thank you for watching, listening to the Core Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin. And you guys know how every single one's up with a big, healthy, and hearty. See ya! Yeah!